Easter is upon us, and it is true. We are an Easter people, and that is a wonderful and beautiful thing. But more than that, we are an Easter people with a Good Friday mission. Welcome to this episode of Pearls of the Interior Life. Thank you for making this time for the Lord. Always good to be with you. Let's open with the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here we are in Holy Week, Easter within our sights. For this episode, we have three different reflections, three things to reflect on as we come up to Easter and especially on Holy Thursday. Good Friday, and then Easter Sunday. Very specific reflection for each one, with particular focus on Good Friday. Let's jump into them, though. Holy Thursday. The scripture for Holy Thursday is John chapter 13, 1 through 15. This is the famous washing of the feet. And here are four different perspectives from four different masters on this, all related, and all of them we're going to carry into the scripture in a moment. First, we have two great commentators that are explaining to us how Jesus is giving us an example. From Gospel commentator Cornelius Alapide, Then Jesus puts water into a basin and begins to wash the feet of his disciples and wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. St. Cyprian, Theophylact, Euthemius all note Christ did all these things by himself without the aid or help of anyone to teach us how attentively and carefully we ought to serve others. And from George Leo Haydock, And though he went out from God and returns to him, yet here he condescends to perform the office, not of the Lord God of the universe, but of a man and a slave. And this, says St. John Chrysostom, that he might tread all pride underfoot, doing everything himself on this occasion to teach us with what eagerness we ought to perform the duties of humility. Elsewhere, St. John Chrysostom focuses on the amazing love that Christ has and mercy that he's even willing to wash the feet of Judas. And just before, or at the beginning of this scene, in verse 2, we're told that Satan enters in to Judas. So from St. John Chrysostom, this the evangelist has said amazed showing that Jesus washed the man who had already chosen to betray him. And finally, Fulton Sheen, Bishop Fulton Sheen, gives us a broader view of where this fits in to Christ's entire mission. The scene was a summary of his incarnation, rising up from the heavenly banquet in intimate union of nature with the Father. He laid aside the garments of his glory, wrapped about his divinity, the towel of human nature, which he took from Mary, poured the laver of regeneration, which is his blood, shed on the cross to redeem men, and began washing the souls of his disciples and followers through the merits of his death, resurrection, and ascension. So, a suggestion on Thursday is to read this scripture and again enter deeply into it, meditate on it, what Christ has done for us. You know, in some ways, the washing of the feet can be more relatable than the crucifixion on the cross because the crucifixion is just so very extreme. You can place yourself here and look at Christ's focus, even though he knows what's coming, even though he knows what's coming, and he knows Judas as he washes Judas's feet. He knows Satan is there with Judas. He knew with Peter right away when Satan was influencing Peter earlier on in the gospel, and he says, get behind me, Satan. He knew Satan was right there with Judas, and still he washes his feet, giving Judas that last opportunity for repentance. Sadly for Judas, he was not able to to take that and say yes to it. But enter into the scripture and put yourself in that room. Picture Christ washing your feet, even though he knows he is about to suffer greatly and be executed. He's put that aside, and he is focused totally on one thing, you. That is worthy of meditation, and that's the point, it is often pointed out, of the washing of the feet. It is preparing us, explaining to us, showing us what Christ is doing in the crucifixion. It's a, it's a model for it. So, great way to enter it into that in meditation on Thursday. Great way to prepare us for Friday. 
This brings us to Good Friday, really the pinnacle. And those are in Christ's words because what we want to focus on here for this reflection is Christ's final words, it is finished. And our scripture for this Good Friday this year comes from John. It's John 18, verse 1 through 19, or is it 19, verse 42. And so we want to walk up through all the events to Christ's final words. It is finished. And that's why Good Friday, his crucifixion, is really the pinnacle of his work of salvation. And we'll turn again to Bishop Fulton Sheen. This comes from his reflection on this from his book, Lord, Teach Us to Pray. And he focuses on these words. First, it is finished in that it is the completeness of revelation. His crucifixion completes, other words that are often used, or consummates all of the prophecies coming all the way from the very beginning of creation up through the Old Testament and then into his saving work of the New Testament. It completes all of God's work in creation to redeem it. It is also finished, Bishop Sheen points out, in terms of the cycle of love. And Sheen just re reiterates the understanding of the church that love does two things. It creates and it sacrifices. And that, that's very closely tied, by the way, to God's uh, being and how we share in that. And our two high powers of intellect and will, our, our intellect is creative. God's intellect becomes Christ. The will is sacrificial, and from that comes the Holy Spirit, in, in a sense. There, there's a bit of a, a simplification, of course, but love is creative and sacrificial. Man and woman, husband and wife, come together. Their love is creative. They produce a child. What do they do? They sacrifice for that child. So the, the sacrifice, Christ sacrifice, completes his mission once again. Bishop Sheen then goes on to point out how this is a model for us of when our time comes, and we always need to have that before us, and especially we think of that now, not to just have life end, but have life be finished. There's an old hymn, and it has lines how we should have remorse for talent wasted and time misspent. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? But that's not meant to be something that beats us down, but something that inspires us and lifts us up to make good for that. We can always start fresh. Christ, I make all things new so that when our time comes, our life is finished. Most of us, if we died right now, we would say, huh, boy, that was the end of my life. We wouldn't feel like, ah, it's finished. We wouldn't feel like we had completed our purpose. But that's our point. That's a big point of Lent is to reflect on this. What are those things? What is God's work in us that is unfinished? Where do we still like to toy around with our, our pet sins, our pet vices, our pet indulgences, instead of just once and for all, through Christ's power, overcoming them? Where do we hold back from God? Where do we not trust him that he's going to provide for us with his plan instead of us following our agenda? Where do we not give where do we fail to give without counting the cost in loving our neighbor? Those are the measures of whether or not we would be ready to say, ah, it's finished. <laughs> Lord, you can bring me home now. <laughs> I'm done. And look, I, those, those, are, those are big measuring sticks. I get it. The, the point is, each Lent, really each day, but especially each Lent into Easter, is a time for us to take stock and make that steady progress. That is the model that Christ is giving us, that on the cross, his work is finished. And finally, she makes the distinction on the cross. He has finished his work in his human body. He still continues his work in his mystical body, the church, in each of us. He has done his work there on the cross. What remains is for each of us then to complete that as part of his mystical body, each for ourself in our own way. Reflecting on those words, it is finished. And also reflecting, where is it finished? Where is our work finished on the cross? Our work is always denial of self, 
we become small so God can become big. Beautiful thing to meditate, especially on Good Friday. Then that brings us to Easter Sunday, the <laughs> resurrection. Now, as I'm recording this word, Holy Week, a little hard to be in an Easter mode right now. We'll continue on this in in detail in the coming weeks. But first, it, it is good, especially as we approach Easter, to point out that the resurrection is, in a sense, the exclamation point. In many ways, the key, the importance of the resurrection is the confirmation of all of Christ's other work that was completed on the cross. All of us have a little bit of Doubting Thomas in us. And we, we needed that validation that Christ has truly risen in body and spirit. It's a resurrection of the body. We're not just a people of the spirit. We are and flesh spirits. And the resurrection of Christ is truly a resurrection of his body. And this is very relevant to what we've been looking at at Lent. Our theme, our theme, the theme of the scripture in Lent, as we point out again and again, is where do we need that renewal, that resurrection in our life? Where is God trying to bring new life to us in our interior? Where are those points, those areas of us that are dead, where we need that new living water, where we need new sight, where we need to literally be resurrected? If we have been reflecting on that, if we do have a sense of what God is trying to do in us, if we have been doing our part to try to participate in that, now is the time when we should have that wonderful joy and confidence that God will complete that work in us. And so we keep praying on, we keep doing our part. And because Easter Sunday, Christ's resurrection is that promise that it will come in us at some point. Will it literally come Easter Sunday? Maybe not, probably not. But with Easter Sunday, we have that great confidence and trust and belief that it will come. Why? because we know our resurrection will come because his already did. And that is the point of the resurrection, to give us that faith, that confidence in him, and that he will complete these things. He will complete that work in us. With that, I'm wishing you a beautiful rest of your Holy Week, an extremely happy, holy, joyous Easter to you and your loved ones. And I look forward to being with you again.